Hey, what's up guys, I'm Theo Joe, and for months I've been searching in my computer for 10 cool hidden Windows features that you guys might not know about. Some of these I've talked about before and others I didn't even know about until recently. Now, these are all in Windows 10 at least, but many will also be in earlier versions of Windows as well. And if you guys end up enjoying this video at any point, if you could give it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome so I know to make more like this. So enough chit chat, let's get started. Number one, the secret start menu. Now, it's not exactly a secret, but somehow I didn't even know about this until a few days ago. Everyone knows that ever since Windows 8, the start menu generally sucks and is hard to navigate, usually takes a while to get to where you want. But if you right click on the start menu button, it brings up a different context menu with lots of quick access shortcuts. You can go directly to the task manager, the command prompt, or even command prompt as an admin, the device manager, network connections, and even the control panel. And no, I don't mean the new control panel, the Windows settings window, but the good old familiar control panel we've known since Windows XP. Now, of course, you could get to all this without the secret start menu just by searching or creating your own shortcut, but with this, it's all just one click away, pretty convenient. Number two is what I'll call the storage manager, which I do believe is only in Windows 10. Now for this, you do actually have to go to the Windows settings window I just complained about through the start menu. Then once you're there, you click on the storage tab, and this shows you some basic info about all your drives. But if you click on one of these, you can get some interesting data. It will show you which types of files are taking up how much space, so you can get a better idea of where all your free space went. And if you click on one of these again, it will show you specifically what is taking up the most space. So here I can see that in apps and games on my C drive, that I've got a few games that are probably responsible for most of the space on here, several tens of gigabytes. You can also see the system files like virtual memory, hibernation files, system restore points, or even temporary files as well. And you'll probably be surprised about how much these are all taking up. Not a bad place to start if you're running low on hard drive space. On to number three, the famous so-called God Mode menu. And it's also been referred to as the Windows Master Control Panel or the All Tasks folder. And this one has been around since Vista, I think, but it's still pretty neat. Now, this is basically a list of shortcuts to almost every settings menu in Windows. To get to it, you simply create a new folder anywhere, probably on the desktop, and then rename it to the following string. Most of the time, you see instructions that say to rename it to God Mode, period, and then all those characters. But really, you can replace God Mode with anything you want, as long as the rest is the same. So I'm just gonna call mine everything. In any case, the icon will change to the same one as the control panel, and inside you will get a huge list of organized shortcuts to pretty much every Windows setting you can imagine. Also, another thing you can do is if there's one of these settings you need often, you can right click it and hit create shortcut to put a link right on your desktop so you don't have to search for that setting anymore. Number four, snipping tool. This is certainly one of my favorites and probably one that you guys already know about, a lot of you, but if not, you're gonna like it. Snipping Tool is a built-in Windows program that simply lets you highlight and screenshot things on your screen. Very simple, but very useful. You can get to it just by going to the Start menu and searching for Snipping Tool, and I have a shortcut for it pinned as well, so you can do that if you want. To use it, you just hit New, and then highlight whatever you want, and then you can draw on it or save the screenshot right away. Also, it doesn't have to be just a rectangle. If you click on the drop-down next to new, you can snip a specific window, the entire screen, or even freehand it. But keep in mind, the freehand one doesn't put a background of transparency. It does a white background, so just keep that in mind if you're into that sort of thing. So this definitely is something I use all the time, and it saves me from having to screenshot the whole screen and then crop it down like you had to do in the old Windows XP days. Really convenient. Moving on, number five is Sticky Notes. This one is pretty simple, so I won't really spend that much time on it. It's another built-in app that you can find by searching in the Start menu or looking in the programs list. And it's just a way to write notes and stick them on your desktop to remember stuff. It's extremely basic. The only real options are to change the size and color of the notes, and you can't even change the font or text size. But if you're on a tablet, you can use Windows Ink to handwrite on these. However, one cool feature is if you choose to enable insights by clicking on the three dots at the top and then clicking on the gear, you can enable it there. With insights, it will look at the content of the notes and use Cortana, the AI, to show more info about that based on context. Like if you type in what looks like a reminder, like go to the bank tomorrow, it will ask if you want to make an actual reminder. 
and if you type in a stock symbol, for example, it will show you info about that. All sorts of other stuff, you can look into all the features it has. Okay, number six, Windows Remote Assistance. Here's another simple one, and the idea is it makes it easy to either get assistance or give assistance to someone remotely who is having trouble with their Windows computer. To get to it, you search for Remote Assistance in the Start menu, and depending on your version of Windows, you might see something different, but here we're gonna click Invite Someone to Connect to Your PC to Help or Offer Help. Then the next window, you choose whether you're the one that needs help or not, and it guides you through it. You can connect in a few ways, including emailing someone a connect file or manually typing in the IP address even, or using the Easy Connect feature if it works. Then you can just control the person's desktop, do whatever you gotta do, fix it, pretty simple. Number seven, another feature for fixing the computer is the Problem Steps Recorder. You can get to this by simply searching for a Steps Recorder, and it should bring up a small and very simple window bar. The point of the Steps Recorder is twofold. First, if someone's having a problem with the computer, like it's showing an error message or something, you can record exactly what you're doing to reproduce the problem. After you start and finish the recording, it will generate a page with screenshots and a description of what you did, such as what you clicked on at what time, that sort of thing. So for example, if you're trying to help someone and they're not being very descriptive, they're just saying it's not working without actually describing what the problem is in any way, you can have them do this to figure out what they're talking about. Now, the other possible use for this is if you need to show someone what they need to do to fix the problem. Sometimes it can be really difficult to walk someone through what they need to do, so with this, you can just do it yourself and send them the file to show them and guide them through what they should be clicking on and when. So it makes things a lot easier. All right, next number eight is the sound recorder or voice recorder, depending on which Windows version you have. This one is dead simple. So you just search for voice recorder in the start menu, click it, and it will bring up the most simple program you can imagine. It's literally one button. You click on it and it just starts recording through the microphone. During the recording, you have a wide selection of options, including pause, unpause, and add marker, or stop recording. And once you stop recording, it saves the file, and while you can't choose where it goes, you can right-click on it and hit open file location to find it and then move it wherever you want after that. Or if you click on the recording, it does let you trim the audio, but that's the extent of the editing you can do with it. So it's a very simple program, but if you need to quickly just make a recording to remind you of something or send it to someone, not a bad little feature. Coming near the end, number nine is the malicious software removal tool. You can get to it by searching for the whole name or just typing in MRT into the start menu and hitting enter. This one is kind of interesting because unlike the name suggests, this isn't a full-fledged antivirus program. Its purpose is to search your computer for widespread viruses for Windows, and it's also periodically updated through Windows Update. As the program will tell you, it's not meant to replace your regular antivirus, and it doesn't do automatic scheduled scans. It only runs when you manually run it. It's definitely best to run alongside your current antivirus and I'd say it's a good starting point if you suspect you have a virus. If the virus happens to be one of the very common ones detected by the tool, this is an easy and quick way to get rid of it. So if for some reason you currently don't have an antivirus program, which you should, this is definitely something you can at least try first. However, I would think that any decent antivirus would already be able to handle anything this tool does, but who knows, at least it's something more you can try. And now finally, number 10 is a tool that you hopefully never have to use, the Windows Memory Diagnostic Program. Now wait a minute, because before you run this, keep in mind that it will try to restart your computer if you click on the wrong thing, so pay attention before you go searching for it. So to get to it, you can search for Memory Diagnostic in the Start menu, and then click on it. But again, watch out, because you can see that the first option says Restart Now, which you probably don't wanna do. You see, the tool is actually run outside of Windows when your computer boots, so your computer therefore needs to restart to use it. Once you do it, it will check your computer's memory, AKA RAM, for any issues it may be having. And the reason I said I hope you never need to use it is because if your memory does have issues, probably the only solution is to buy completely new RAM since it's a hardware issue. And if you do have a bad stick of memory, it can manifest itself in many strange ways that might not even suggest it's a memory issue at all. You would never know. It's not like you'll just get an error message that says memory error. Instead, you might randomly start noticing a lot of your files are getting corrupted or you're getting random restarts in blue screens or even bizarre graphics problems in video games 
like this screenshot I took years ago that was the result of a bad stick of memory. You can see that the objects in the games were doing that, I don't even know how to describe it, and who would have thought it was a result of the RAM? I probably would have thought it was the graphics card, but no. So the next time you're having really weird computer issues or you can't explain it otherwise, your memory is something that you should probably check with this tool. So there you have it, 10 features in Windows that you almost never hear about. I know that some of you probably out there already know about many of these, but hopefully at least learned about one or two things. So you can let me know what you think down in the comments section. Maybe I missed something. If you know some really secret ones, let us know. Or maybe you didn't know about any of these. That'd be great. So if you guys also like this video, again, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So I know you liked it, I'd appreciate it. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on these even if you're on a phone. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications or else YouTube probably won't show you the new videos otherwise. Anyway, thanks again for watching guys, and as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.